Welcome to the Copper King Mine and Railroad. Today we're going to talk about the precipitation plant. We called it the P plant. So stay tuned. The precipitation plant, we called it the P plant. The green water coming out of the mine dumps was high in copper sulfates. Early miners found that by putting scrap metal into the water, over time a chemical reaction consumes the steel and removes the copper molecules from the water. This is called leaching. Now Utah Copper tried this precipitation to extract copper from the mineral rich waters as early as 1915. Then over time, this process was worked on and perfected. The green water was undrinkable, but was said it killed disease causing bacteria. This was a good thing since early Bingham Creek was nothing but the town sewer for many years. Look at these pictures of these outhouses over the creek here. I just find this fascinating that they would just do this. Just put these outhouses over the water right here. The leaching process was not new. Old miners would place barrels or tubs, sometimes called launderers, near the mine dumps and add scrap metal. The chemistry was simple. The green water is high in sulfuric acid. As part of that leaching process, the chemical reaction consumes the steel and removes the copper molecules from the water. Then it settles to the bottom, becoming 75 to 90 percent copper. So let's show how this process developed over the years. We have some pictures of the places they put these precipitation plants. Early leaching by Ohio Copper. Now this structure is in front of the E-Line Bridge up in Copperfield. Now it was designed to distribute water through the Ohio Copper workings coming out of the mascot tunnel. And that was way down in Lark, a thousand feet below and they'd collect this mineral rich water down there. Now Utah Copper had a plant out to Magna and then they said there was also some precipitation work done at Frogtown just up from the train station but I don't have any pictures of that but if for more information you can go to Don Strack's website utahrails.net there's a lot of information on these plants. Anyway they built a precipitation plant up to the old Denver Rio Grande Cuprum Yard. Now this November 10th, 1930 picture shows that long building that covered all the vats up there. Then in April 1929, a new precipitation plant will be placed in operation. It was at the mouth of Bingham Canyon, a place called Lead Mine. The plant was housed in this long building. According to Ripley, was the longest building in the world, 1,520 feet long, with vats four feet wide and four feet deep. So we have some great pictures of this long, long building. So just some pictures of this long building they had here up in Lead Mine. Different angles and different views of this building. Here's a picture of the 4x4 four four concrete trough, or launderers. Then this is a real cool picture. This is uh, when they was building that long building. They're doing the grading around it. And then another picture of them constructing this long building. But then in April 7th, 1963, a big wind will flatten the large portion of that long building. And so here's the... Some 1963 pictures of them cleaning up this area where this building collapsed. Well, most of the building collapsed. I think a little remained. Now, this was called a setback until they found out that a forklift and mobile cranes could move this scrap metal into these vats more efficiently and at less expense than the indoor cranes with the limited space they had in there. So, now this is... So neat. This is some inside pictures of that uh, inside crane and the vats and see all the metal they've got stacked up in there. Anyway, when this roof came down, it made it more efficient for them. 
on July 1st, 1964, they had a strike. And so they put all the foremen to work in the pea plant. And we have a lot of pictures of that strike. Now look past the strikers to the pea plant and see the work they're doing in there. Now this is lead mine, the community of the lead mine. This is where they would set up their picket line, the strikers would. You can see these men loading this scrap metal into these vats right here in these pictures. Then the strikers looking down through the fence at them guys working and strikers all standing around. Look like these strikers right here are <laughs> giving this guy a bad time when it's in this plaid shirt they're talking to him so anyway i thought that was pretty fun then after that building was gone we got some pictures of how this opened up this whole area I thought, really neat pictures and then we have some colored pictures of the pea plant this guy right here squirting down one of these launders or troughs now they said if you worked at the pea plant you kind of turned green <laughs> your clothing and, and everything would turn green. So that I thought that was pretty interesting. And then in 1950, they made a more aggressive approach to put some water up on the dumps. And so they pumped this water up this mountainside. Here's some pictures of these great big pipes that they used to pump this water up into all the, the old mine dumps they had up there. And they also prepared these mine dumps and they kind of sectioned them off you can see some pictures of how they sectioned off these areas that kind of retained the water and then sprinkler systems of every kind was used to distribute that water across these dumps areas they even had their own gang of workers they called it the water service supplying scrap steel was a business in itself polar steel a company just outside the town of copperton they would shred the steel and then heat it up to remove the tin that was on the cans. Then Denver Rio Grande Western would deliver this shredded steel up to the precipitation plant. So we're lucky we have some great pictures of this uh, Polar steel plant. And these are by James Belmont. He's a great photographer in Utah and does a lot of train pictures in Utah. And then we have some pictures by him of these trains delivering the shroud is still up to the lead mine. Then here's a picture of 1965 of the precipitation plant, and then 1966. Then this is a picture of the plant in from the Kenoscope magazine in 1970. And they perfected this over the years, like I said, and you can see in these later pictures, they have these cone type precipitators and they were fed by a conveyor belt. The precipitation plant became uneconomical. It changed from being a metal recovery system to becoming a water management system. Active pumping leach water into the dump stopped. The precipitation plant closed fall of 2000. So that was the pea plant, precipitation plant, of Bingham Canyon Mine.